Welcome back. Uh, this is um, Dr. Ron Prefer from Western New England University. This is a uh, multi-part tutorial about various components of medicinal chemistry. Um, this part, this is part two, and we'll be discussing acidic functional groups. The end of part one, I gave a nice list of various functional groups that you will are responsible for knowing and their corresponding pK values. And here are just a sampling of them. These are by far the most abundant. Um, you can clearly see where the red line separates the acids from the bases. So let's delve deeply into the acids. The most commonly utilized acidic functional group is a carboxylic acid. You've seen this in general chemistry onwards. Classically, it's drawn like this, where you have a carboxylic acid that can be deprotonated to form the carboxylate and H+. Common um, drugs on the market, penicillin, ibuprofen, these are carboxylic acids. Now, you can notice that they have a pK value, as I indicated on the table, you estimate around 4. Now, there is a range based upon other electronics and steric factors, but we estimate 4. Now, if you'll notice on the right, I have a pK of 3.4. This is actually wrong, and this is a trick question. Uh, the reason it's wrong is because it does not have an H. It cannot be an, uh, an acid and have a pK value unless it has an H. So that's important now, but it comes more important with bases. So always have that in mind. In order for it to have a pK value, it must have a proton to ultimately lose. So the simplest of all of the uh, acid functional groups for medicinal chemistry is the carboxylic acid. The more in-depth ones are like the sulfates, phosphonates, phosphonates. They have similar um, functionality, shall we say, similar behavior as a carboxylic acid. However, they tend to have a lower pK value, hence more acidic. So your sulfonates have a pK of less than zero. And the reason is it has resonance stability, as you can see here, as well as the electron uh, electronegativity difference between the various elements. Again, that's not as important. However, it does have an ability to readily lose a proton. Your sulfates, having an extra oxygen which can donate in, have a slightly elevated pK value compared to your sulfonates. So therefore, it has a pK of 1 to 2. But in general, because it has a pK of so low, what that means is you need to be at pK 2 in order for this molecule to have a proton. So the only time that this is ever protonated, having that H on there, is when it's in your stomach. Any other physiological pH, 7.4, it will be deprotonated. You have also your phosphates and phosphonates, very similar, except now you have a P versus an S, but there's an additional proton to be lost. Hence, you end up with two pK values. So your phosphonates, again, the on means there's no O here, similar to your sulfonates, but they do have two OHs. The first um, OH, the first proton that can be lost, has a pK of approximately 2. Once it is off, the second uh, deprotonation event requires an elevated pH, more basic to, pick it, to take it off, and this is because Molecules tend not to like to have two negative charge, especially close to each other, electronic repulsion. Your phosphate, again, there's that extra O, which gives it the name versus so phosphonate. Um, again, it does have pK value that's slightly elevated with that extra oxygen, similar to sulfonates versus sulfates. Um, but again, the trend still applies. The second proton is more difficult to take off. Not many drugs on the market with these two function, uh, functional groups, or these four. More common are your sulfonamides and sulfonamides. Again, similar to carboxylic acid. They have a range of pKs depending on what other stuff is attached to it. So here you have your sulfonamides. Again, just to replace the sulfur with a carbon double bond, you have a amide. Now this is a sulfonamide, so again, if you put an O here, it will be a sulfate. Um, it is an acidic proton, however, it is not super acidic, meaning you have to bring this all the way up to a pH, for a simplest one, of pH 10 for it to lose its proton. However, just like every other functional group, that can be, it will be affected by neighboring functionalities, neighboring electronics. And for this one here, all these additional moiety causes a drastic decrease in pK value from 10 to 5. And remember, this is a log scale. So this is 10,000 times more acidic 
than simple sulfonamide as shown here. So there is a huge range and should always be aware of that. Again, that it is a log scale. But again, what this implies is that physiological pH is this one here will preferentially exist like this, the protonated form. Whereas here, because it has a pK of 5, that means at pH 7.4, that is a higher pK, pH value than this pK, it would exist preferentially with the H off. And that, I'm going to stop here for a moment so you can understand that. Let's just use these two as a perfect example here. And this is the, the, the crucial area that people have a lot of difficulty with. Let's assume I'm this molecule here on the right, okay, has a pK of 5. What that means is at pH 5, it exists 50-50, as drawn here, and 50% of the time with this H missing, so N minus. So it's a 50-50 mixture at pH 5. At any pH lower than that pK value, so pH 4, pH 3, pH 2, there is more H plus present. So therefore, any N minus would pick up that H and will exist more and more like this. Likewise, at values of a pH higher than the pK, so we'll say a pH of 6, 7, 8, etc., there is more OH minus around to attack this H plus, so therefore it exists more as N minus. Now, if you didn't get that, re-listen to that over and over and over and over again. I'll repeat it a couple times throughout, but that is the most difficult part that people have of understanding pKa and pH and what it actually means. Let's carry on though. That was this was sulfonamides. Sulfurea is very popular in in, um, in drugs these days. Um, they have happen to have an additional resonance structure, and having additional resonance structure will call us a decrease in the pK value. So again, here here's your prototypical sulfonamide, but now you happen to have a urea here. This N C double bond O N. That's a urea. You link these two together, sulfonamide. This proton has resonance structures across, and thus, compared to a sulfonamide, which we typically think of around a pK of 9-ish, this is much lower, around 5 to 6. Another um, common, we'll say, um, functional group, it's not as common yet, but it's becoming more popular, is the tetrazol. This is an isosteer of carboxylic acid, meaning that they have... Um, the arrangement of atoms may be different, but the electronic volume and the electronic distribution are quite similar. So if I just say it's tetrazole, and it's an isosteer of a carboxylic acid, you should be able to tell me and right off the bat whether this will exist as a plus or a minus. Again, it's always neutral or plus or neutral and minus. And since we're talking about an isosteer of a carboxylic acid, it should be neutral and negative because a carboxylic acid exists as neutral and negative. So if we were to compare the two, here's tetrazole up top here, it can lose this proton and therefore it has a pK of typically we think around 5, whereas carboxylic acids typically have a pK we always think around 3 to 4. But again it's just the removal of the proton. Now, as I mentioned, it's, as you saw, it's resin stability. It tends to be a little bit more lipophilic than carboxylic acid, which is helpful when you're crossing in through a membrane. They tend to have a little bit uh, more oral bioavailability, but again, these are relatively new. There's only a few structures that are currently available. So you can see we have various resin stability and two very common or commercially available drugs that contain the uh, tetrazole moiety. And again, when I'm referring to a pK value, Here's a 4.9, 4.7. It's this proton being lost. Uh, another one is the phenol. This is also known as a very weak uh, electrolyte, also known as a pseudo-electrolyte. They are acids by definition because they have a proton that can be lost, meaning it can exist as a neutral molecule or as a negative. And that's one way to also think about the difference between acids and bases. And acids can exist as neutral or negative, a base, neutral or positive. So uh, this, this acid here is a weak acid or pseudo electrolyte. It has a very high pK value, around, typically around 10. Now 7 is rare but the, occasionally and I'll show you an example where it is, but typically we think around 10. It is an acid, neutral or negative. 
and here's three simple examples that you've seen here. We have a range of 10 for simple um, the estradiol, as well as other ones that we've seen that can, just by putting iodines to the electronics, can drop the pK down to 6.7. And again, on the bottom here, we say percent ionization, which in a later tutorial will actually explain exactly how you obtain that value. Some of the other acids, again acids, neutral or negative, are more difficult to find. Um, the beta dicarbonyl, I've found over the years, causes the most problem for students. Uh, these can exist as either you have a 1,3-diketone, a 1,3-diester, 1,3-dialdehyde, 1,3-diacid, or any combinations, as well as imids. They also fall in this category. But again, since we're talking about acids, we're looking for a proton, a hydrogen, that can be removed, that happens to fall between two carbonyls and a huge range 4.5 to 8.5 based upon what else is attached to it. In general you're looking for this. The reason it's X because Im um, imids is a nitrogen. Every other one there's a carbon here that has at least one H off of it. Could have two but one H is what we're looking for. So you can imagine that this is drawn here we'll say it's a diketone. Diketone can lose a proton and it's resin stabilized. So you have an H that can come off it must have a pK value. Now, sadly, some one beta dicarbonyls are more difficult to identify than others. You're looking at this, this shouldn't be hard to find in a molecule. Like a tetrazole, you can find a carboxylic acid. But why beta dicarbonyls? Because it happens to sometimes be drawn in two forms. Either as the beta dicarbonyl, as I showed, or one of those um, ketones, we'll say, is, has been drawn in the enol form. Sometimes like this. Real example, warfarin. This is the same as this, but you never see warfarin drawn like the molecule on the right. It's always drawn like this. There's more conjugation, and that's why it's typically drawn in this form. So regardless whether it's this form or this form, they both have an acidic proton. Here it's right there, there it's right there. It's the same proton. It's just you know, been drawn two different resonance forms, and it has a pK of 5. So again, what does pK of 5 mean? That means it has the ability to lose a proton, neutral or negative. At pH 5, or 5.05 to be exact, it will be a 50-50 mixture of these two molecules. At pH 4, 3, 2, 1, any lower number, like your stomach, pH 2, there exists more H plus floating around, so therefore if there was, if it exists at a, a negative form, it could be protonate, it could be extract the proton. Okay, Jeff, I'm going to stop there for a second. I did a mistake. I said 50-50 between these two structures. That is wrong. I need to step back. Okay. So um, when I talk about warfarin is when I'm going to start up again. So pause for a second and then go into it. So let's look at a real example. We have warfarin here. You can see they're both warfarin, just drawn in a slightly different manner. Here we have it as the, you have your ketone or in this case it's an ester, and the enol form, and here it's an ester and a ketone. These are the exact same molecule. Here we have a more resonance stabilized form of it. But regardless, whether it's drawn like this or like this, it is a molecule that has a proton that can be extracted, hence it's an acid, and that particular proton has a pK of 5.05. So as I mentioned, let, let's actually look, look at this for a moment and use this as a prototypical molecule of what does that mean. At pH 5.05, this molecule exists 50% of the time like this and 50% of the time with this proton missing. At pH 4, 3, 2, 1, lower than 5.05, there's more H plus floating around, therefore it'll exist more like this. At higher pH values, there's more OH minus floating around, or less H plus, whatever way you want to look at it, there's going to be less of this molecule and more of O minus. Um, there is resonance stability, and that's why it can be drawn in many ways. Here's another example. You can see that it could be drawn this way, and this is the typical way that you'll find in textbooks. However, this is, and this are just as accurate. Here you can see there's the proton that's acidic. Here it's the H that we never draw off a carbon, making it more difficult. But regardless, these are only these are examples of beta dicarbonyls. Um, another type of beta dicarbonyl, or subclass we'll call it, is the imids. 
uh, pretty well the middle carbon here, this one here, has been replaced with a nitrogen. They tend to be less acidic, hence a higher pK value. Um, so if we take a look at these molecules here, let's do a little game. Let's rank these in order of pK value. Well, first you need to know that they're all acids. That's the first thing you got to find out. And then identify the functional group and where's this um, pro proton. So if you look at here, we have ourselves. This is a classic beta dicarbonyl we ha in the enol amide form. So imagine this was double bond O instead. Well, they're, they're, they're more identifiable as a beta dicarbonyl. But regardless, there's a proton. And this is a beta dicarbonyl where it's not nitrogen, so this will be fairly acidic. Here we have imids. There is an imid. So if we look at this, this one is the beta dicarbonyl. It should have the lowest pK value. It's the strongest acid. Remember, strong acids, always remember this, hydrochloric acid, pH minus, minus 7 in fact. Carboxylic acid is a plus 4. So you can see the difference in uh, pHs. We, here we got the imid again, so this one's going to be not as acidic as this one here because it's a nitrogen versus a carbon. What about this bad boy over here? The, tri the trimethodione. It's a trick. These two have it. What's, what's the pK value for here? There isn't one. Why? Because there's no acidic proton. That's why. So remember, it needs to have an acidic proton in order for it to have a pK value. So these are isn't by far not ex uh, all of your uh, functional groups that you will see when it comes to acids, but this is a the vast majority of we've just gone over. So um, please join me for part three where I'll be talking about basic functional groups.